Take a look at this, a diamond in the sky. That is the asteroid Ryugo, an image captured from just about 20 kilometers away by a Japanese probe that has arrived at that asteroid. And that moment, so significant, look who it's brought in. <laughs> Our science commentator and the host of Quirks and Quirks, Bob McDonald, who's with me this morning, and great to see you in person. Good morning, nice to see that, you live. <laughs> yeah, I know. So that moment, and we'll go back to it again because it's, it's so significant, this is Hayabusa 2 in action, right, yes. Bob? Tell me yes. about this rendezvous. Well, this is the second time, as you know, Heather, that uh, the Japanese have sent a probe to an asteroid uh, to go there and not only study it, take pictures of it, but they're going to land on it, and then they're going to take a sample from that asteroid and bring it back to the Earth. And it's just going to be remarkable. This okay, we'll talk in a little bit years. more detail about that. Yeah. But as we look at that moment again, because that, that was the yesterday, the yep. moment of rendezvous, after how long? It's like two and a half billion kilometers that's trip. Right. and four years to get there. And what's unusual about this asteroid is you say it's a diamond shape. It's very bizarre. It's, it bulges out in the middle, and it's so oddly shaped that if you stood on this thing, it's, only a, it's less than a kilometer across, gravity does not always point straight down because it bulges out in the center sometimes. So if you were up near the top, uh, sort of halfway down that, that slope, uh, gravity would actually fall towards the, uh, an angle. And that makes it tricky because they want to touch down. They want to survey this thing. They're going to land you, on that? Yeah, they're going to put three little probes down onto it and really surface. But if you're going to go down, you're going to fall very, very slowly. If you were to stand on this asteroid, mm -hmm. you would have almost no weight. You'd weigh about the, the amount of the ink in your pen. So you would fly if you want to go anywhere. So they're going to take these little robotic rovers, they're calling them, but you notice they just look like boxes. They don't have any wheels on them. Right. They're going to land on the surface. And then inside, they have a camera. They have instruments that can analyze the soil, what the asteroid is made of. But there's also a lever in there that has a weight on it. And this, this lever just pops up. Here, you'll see it go. And when it pops up, the whole thing just jumps into the air. And it can turn itself over. It can jump up to 70 meters and then come back down again. So these things are going to hop around on the surface of the, of the asteroid and look at it in different locations. It's really astounding. So are there, I mean, we've had challenges depending on where they land. You know, they don't get enough sun or there's a That's great big right. crevasse or something you like bet. that. They don't know exactly what they're going to find, do they, when they That's, get to that that's surface? The, that's the amazing thing about going someplace for the first time. You don't right. really know what it's going to be like. And we saw with the Rosetta mission that went to a comet, they put a little lander on it and it bounced. If you hit them too hard, you bounce back off in that low gravity and, and uh, Rosetta ended up in a crevasse on its side. We couldn't use it. So these things, you know, where they end up, who knows? Okay, but uh, the idea is that it's going to land and bounce and then it's going to collect. And what is it going to, what was it going to bring back? Well, first they're going to hit it. They're going, they're going to hit it, actually make a hole. Then the whole spacecraft is going to go down, and it's going to probe and just suck up some dust and dirt, whatever it can. And then there, they just made a, a hole on it. They're, they want to sample it from the inside hmm. and see what's going on in there. And then they're going to bring these samples back to the Earth so we can really analyze the asteroid and find out what it's like. But they're just going to kiss it. Just going to come down, just touch it for a second, go see what they can get, and then <laughs> come back home. So it's really quite a mark remarkable, and they'll be home at the end of 2020. Stay With tuned until then, yeah. 2020, <laughs> until we find out what they've collected. What do they hope to learn from whatever they do collect, well, Bob? Asteroids are really, really old. They're the leftover bits that did not become planets or the sun. When the, the recipe for making the solar system, you know when you make a cake, there's always that leftover stuff all over the table? That's yes. what the asteroids are. They, they, ah. They're the ingredients of the original solar system, but they didn't get incorporated. So they haven't changed. So in looking at asteroids or comets, we're looking back in time. We're looking at our own history. How did the solar system come together? What was that original chemistry that made us? Because since then, the Earth has changed. The Earth has volcanoes, and we're evolving, but the asteroids didn't. So it's kind of looking back in time. That's why they're so fascinating. Bob, thank you very much. As we uh, look at Hayabusa in action there, <laughs> arriving at the asteroid, and we'll watch that for the next couple of years. I'll couple see you in 2020 as we uh, <laughs> 18 learn. 18 months they'll okay, be there 18, 18 months. months. Yeah. Okay. Bob, thanks so much. Always Final good. show of Quirks and Quarks That's this right. weekend on yeah. CBC Radio 1, and you have a great summer. You too, Heather. Thanks, thanks so much. Bob McDonald.